Good afternoon. And now the right way around again. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Yes, I'm still got the call from yesterday, but it's a lot better today. Thank you very much for asking. For those who did. Um, today's episode is number 545, and the episode title today is Why Relationships Bring Up Our Old Stuff, I think I called it. Issues. I forgot what it was. Uh, you know, patterns. Patterns, that's the word. Yes, our relationships have been up my old patterns. And actually, this is a, a response to a friend of mine, Gina, who asked me this question two days ago. Yesterday, I was so sick, and it broadcast about being sick. <laughs> Which is say how you deal with relationships in sickness and in health. Because I was in the place of sickness, not in health. And I was like, how did that happen in the past? So I shared some stories from my own past and gave you some perhaps access points about what you can do differently in a relationship. So I would, advise you, I would invite you to look at yesterday's. I sound a lot worse than I do today, which is good news, I guess. Um, I feel a lot more... Um, I'm doing so much stuff to get myself cleaned up, cleared out, it actually feels pretty good. So today is back on track with regular topics, and today's topic is a um, a leap off of my talk from two days ago, which was um, about, it was a testimonial about how healing your past is critical to have a healthy relationship. So now I'm going to go from the other end, which is basically why relationships bring up our patterns, bring up old patterns. Before we jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. Hi. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for the last, um, getting up for two years, it was December before, December 2016 when I started these, I've been doing these talks mostly every day now, uh, definitely for the last 500 or so. These daily talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Most of these talks are aimed towards women, but a lot of these talks, like today's, it's for both genders. I'm, I'm not discriminating that way, so everyone can jump into this one. So the topic today, again, is why relationships bring up our old patterns. And it would make sense, well, having got a master's degree in spiritual psychology, I now, it makes a lot of sense to me now, because before that, I didn't have quite so much wisdom, education, or perspective that I was given through the program. So to be blunt... Um, I learned some stuff, so I'll share that with you. And relationships are an interesting place to be to, to play. And if you're in a conscious relationship, and this is probably the key de um, um, delinea delineation, perhaps, when you're in a conscious relationship or an in a growing relationship or a relationship where you want to become more of who you can be in partnership with somebody else, those sort of things. This is going to become a very relevant conversation. If you want to get into a relationship just to get comfortable, relax, and not deal with anything, this probably, well, it'll be relevant, but you may not want it to be relevant, because this is true in all relationships. So, um, actually, yes, they are in all relationships. Because here's the thing. One reason why relationships um, bring up our old patterns is because our primary romantic relationship is the closest we get to another person. Like, duh. If you don't get close to that person rather than somebody else, you may be doing a relationship for not the best way possible, just a suggestion. But the truth for me is relationships are the place where you can reach your highest and most open vulnerability with somebody. And by so doing, you tend to open up to deeper investigation of your own psyche, so to speak. Not intentionally, but it comes up anyway. So, First of all, being in an intimate relationship is an exposing experience to find your old stuff showing up because you're being that intimate with somebody else, ideally, and that connected and that vulnerable and that naked with that person means that your history, your past experiences, your past patterns will come to the surface to be seen because they're not that far below the surface. And just to make it more complicated, those, Gina, I'm doing the talk that you asked for, so <laughs> join in. Um, so, because primary relationship is where you open up your heart, and it's in the loving space, that place inside, where your um, patterns are stored, for a better word. And so, when you're in a relationship, so that's two things. The first thing is, again, is being in an intimate relationship, being that close to somebody, it exposes you to have more um, visibility of all your own baggage and stuff, because that happens. Secondly, because you're opening your heart especially, that's where a lot of the stuff is stored. Because, as I said before in other talks, and I'll give you, I'm gonna lead you to part three. Well, actually I'll give you a reason why, and I'll get to part three. Is in your um, 
hurt is where your old relationship baggage resides, as it so to speak. Now I'm speaking metaphorically, obviously not your physical heart, but in your some romantic, loving, heart-centered space where you feel that relationship, so you feel that warmth and joy about being in a relationship, that's also where the baggage lives. And it's stored in, in your stomach, it's not stored in your head, it's stored in there. Although there, there is, although there are still over memories for some of the more painful things, just to be clear. So again, when you're in a relationship, what happens is you become exposing of your history to that person. And so your baggage, your upset, your stuff from the past will show up in this relationship, same as it would in every other relationship. And here's the thing, it isn't about them. Because your stuff is showing up, your patterns are showing up, no matter who you're intimate with, because it's the intimacy of that connection that creates that um, revealing, so to speak. So both of them, that's kind of one of the things. Now, let me go to part three, which is really what comes the other way in a sense. I've said this before so many times, but I want to plug into this so it makes sense. Um, I've said before that we get imprinted at a very young age. We learn how to do things at a very young age because we watch the examples of big people around us, pure and simple. So we spend our time in, um, <laughs> in a way, life school with our parents and the adults around us and the older siblings and watch how they do things, and then we model that, we copy that, because we learn by copying. I mean, if you watch babies and kids, they will copy the adults around them because they think that's the way it should be done. We all do that. None of us are born with, with user manuals or full-on memory about how we do life in general. Well, if they have, well, certain people may be, they may be deities, but you know, most of us, most of us um, human people, are born with a blank slate. So we learn about life from watching the adults around us in the first few years of life. And that includes everything around loving and connection because that's part of the biggest thing that happens when we're young because that's nonverbal. It's that warmth of mother to, daughter, to son to daughter. It's also that bonding between father and son and child as well. And so that's where anything that is pattern based, negative based, limiting based gets imprinted. And again, I said, in, I said earlier that we tend to have our patterns tied to our heart. And that's where most of the baggage lies because we learn about loving through the lens of whatever life is like when we're young, which may or may not, one, may or may, may not be accurate, and two, may or may not be perfect, or pretty, or nice. I share my own story about upbringing. It seemed very perfect, but what patterns I took on was because of that in a way that I didn't really think about until it was later. I was like, I did that because what I saw was this, and it's an awakening you get. And so it wasn't until after those relationships where actually I did the ability, because in the relationships I was clueless. Thankfully, I've learned since then. So again, in relationship, it stirs up your stuff because, oh, there's a part four. There's a new, a new zone piece sitting out there. So when you are um, imprinted as a young child, it goes into the subconscious mind, which is basically below the radar. It's not something that you actually are aware of because it's not your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is your awareness, basically. You notice when it's warm or cold. You notice when it's light or dark. Your subconscious mind knows who to attract in a relationship who's going to provide the same loving experience. And that's the big secret. So when I say about relationships will reveal or bring up or bring forward your past patterns is because you attracted a person that would do that for you. That's the biggest piece of the puzzle, so to speak. So not only are you in a place where you're intimate and open to connect with somebody and reveal your truth and your history and your baggage and your patterns, but secondly, your automatic pilot, your subconscious mind, your default programming will be scanning out there to meet somebody who will reciprocate the patterns that you experience as being what ties to loving. Good, bad, or indifferent. And because it's unconscious, it has no judgment. It's just doing what it's doing. And it is a subconscious thing, which means it's totally oblivious to right, wrong, good, bad, whatever. And that's the thing that makes this so challenging for people and also so accessible and do the right thing. Now, so give you a piece of the puzzle. And it's, for me, it's so visible, so, so clear you know, I've been, I mean, I learned this lesson back in 2000, no, 98. So it's been 20 years now that I've been aware of this. And so when I watch people and meet people and clients, especially, it's sometimes challenging for me to stay off of that because I can see what's going on. Because I see what they're doing in a relationship and I go say, well, did that happen when you were younger? Maybe a different flavor of it, maybe a different experience of it, but the same thread, the same love tied to painful experience that goes together. That's the challenge we face in life as human beings. We would tend, in fact, we almost guaranteed to have lo love in a relationship, particularly romantic love, associated with some sort of alignment to the patterns we learned when we were kids. 
and it wasn't patents back then it was behavior we learned what they were doing was right because they're the people who are they're the adults around us they must be right so we would mimic copy imprint learn what they did and think that was the way it should be done as an adult even if your relationship with your parents changed even if it changed the wiring's installed the program is installed you already have this now it built in which means you go on dates and relationships you're going to tend to start reciprocating and experiencing and repeating the same pattern you did as a kid. So that's why relationships do indeed bring up all your old patterns, um, because they're meant to. Now, this is the good news as well as the bad news. You might think, oh, no, it's going to be horrible. I don't want to be in a relationship anymore. I'm going to screw this. This is the good news. Yes, it is good news. Trust me. When something like this shows up, not if, but when something like this shows up, and you become aware of it, the first thing you do, actually, yes, the first thing you do is you don't judge your partner. Because it's tempting to go, you made that happen to me again. It's like, no, they didn't. They're unconscious of it. It's automatic pilot. So the first thing you do is not judge your, your partner. If you're single and you look back at the experience of past relationships, then you're free to do your own thing and get to step two. Step two, if you're in a relationship and you've already done the first part, not judging your partner, or you're single, is... Well, one, if you can, get clear about what it is the pattern that's running so you know what it is. Two, and more, more likely, is get help from somebody who can help you with this. I can volunteer myself for that. That's my, that's my skill set. And three, make a commitment to yourself to be more loving, but disengaging, unplugging, unscrewing, as it were, those patterns from the love so you can be free to love clean and those patterns can be put to rest once and for all. And that's the thing. Can I say, I'm not sure if I should say this or not those patterns will can can and will be healed if you do the work however as one of my favorite authors said um um damn his name would come back to me richard buck in illusions he has a quote in this book which i love but it's so painful to hear which is if you're if you want to find out if you're if you want to find out if your mission on earth, mission on earth is finished if you're still here it isn't and I think the same thing is true of relationships. If you are still on the planet, you've still got work to do on your relationship experiences. That's good news and bad news. It's good news because you can do more work. The bad news is you've got to keep doing the work. And conscious relationship requires that. That's the thing I love most about this is that the thing is when you get into a relationship with somebody who's also committed to this together, this is why I love conscious relationship conversations. The idea of being in your own patterns and stuff You've got to be willing to let the other person show you, tell you, and indicate to you, uh, is that one of your patterns? And vice versa. So you can then do the work to heal and get closer. And it may be 20, 30 patterns show up over the, year, over the years of relationship, maybe. Which is awesome, because each time you hear one, you get closer and closer and closer and closer. That's the power of conscious relationship. Now, for most people, they're not even aware of this. If you're watching my videos, especially if you've been watching the last... Well, if you've watched any of the last 500, 545 broadcasts, you know I talk about this theme a lot about waking up being conscious in a relationship. So if you've been watching these, these talks for the last few months, maybe it's time you get some direct help from me. I'm saying it this way because if you just watch my video for entertainment value because I sound funny with a cold, great. I'm glad you did. Now maybe you can share it out to people who might be getting some value from this. But if you are someone who's looking for help, reach out to me. I'll put in the comments a link for a discovery session, my gift to you, complimentary clarity conversation. Yeah, I got the three C's. Um, it's a 30 minute chat we can have that I'll explain, I'll see where you are, give you some guidance and offer you what next steps. And right now I'm still running my holiday specials. There's some very, very um, economical deals I have. So, so there. Um, it wasn't a Cyber Monday thing or a Black Friday thing, so they didn't use those terms. Secondly, um, if you are single, especially if you're single, if you can be willing to look back at your past relationships, plural, multiples, notice the common threads, the things that didn't work, particularly didn't work, and see where you have a certain experience, certain conversation, certain upset, certain emotional, emotional challenge, a certain thing that was not unique to one relationship, but it happened in several, a few of them. It might be a progression. You might be noticing this relationship was much worse than the previous relationship, or better. You don't know. If you see that sequence, you're now in the place where you can get some help directly. And that's when I suggest you reach out. This is, I won't say one of the best kept secrets, but it's certainly one of the more hidden gems about relationships that is not fun, but can be freeing like you wouldn't believe. So for that, I wish you well. Um, I invite you to look into that for yourself, your homework if you wish, for tonight. 
um, is to look into your past relationships and see where those repeated, mirrored, copied, um, what's the word looking for? Patterns keep showing up. You're welcome, Gina. Thank you for inspiring the talk. Um, so that's your homework if you wish to do it. If you wish to do it, if you don't, it's fine. I, I don't come over and knock on the door and say, have you done your homework? <laughs> With that, I thank you for watching. Um, this is a Facebook Live initially. It goes onto YouTube. Then it's my podcast. Um, this, this, like all my broadcasts, goes onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. you got some crazy patterns on repeat that I'm looking to change. Good. Now you get to do some work. And you know a lot of stuff too, which is good. So you're not, you're not new at this, which is good. I'm not going to say that. Yes, you're not new at this, which is good. Um, so again, Facebook goes Facebook business page, which is Barry Selby, the author on Facebook. Also, my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And then on, um, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and then on my podcast, also subscribe. My podcast is the same as the channel, which, sorry, it's the same as the playlist, which is also Messages from the Masculine. You subscribe to that, download the audios, listen to them whenever you're running around doing stuff, and it will help you get through the day. Again, I put a link in the comments for a discovery session. Um, I, invite to sit, I invite you to reach out and get some support, get some clarity, get some guidance, because frankly, there's no reason to sit in the stuff, in the crap, in the challenges, and not do something about it. So when you recognize the patterns, when you know what's going on, you can make a change. Awareness is the first step, and then not judging is the second step. So again, you've got homework. Um, I'm going to sign up for now because my throat is just about done. And I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.